Okay, 45 degrees outside with 77% humidity, 81.7 inside with 32% humidity. Fantastic. Thank you, Mr. Cool. Yep, that's that unit running and that unit running. I cranked them up to 84 degrees just to show you guys the temperature differential. I got a warm shop during winter and a cool shop during summer. As always, I got links in the description if you want to heat or cool your own shop, check out Mr. Cool. I just put another video out on the installation of these guys, so I'll put a link in the description for that as well. Go check it out. All right. Ooh, chunky. There's the larva. That was half the carburetor. <laughs> that's awesome. If you look right here, the last time this was rebuilt, that's our gasket sticking out right there. So, yeah, this, it was time regardless. Wow. <laughs> See how bad she looks. Mm. Okay, it's a little dark and it's a little gummy, but I've seen worse. This did not have ethanol in it, so this truck was parked with regular gasoline, like no ethanol. <laughs> this is our accelerator pump. Oh, spring's a little gnarly. Hopefully the kit comes with a new one. That is shot. That's not the right wrench for the job. Sure it is. It's the right wrench for every job. It's adjustable. You know, about 30 years ago when I was working on my bicycle, sure, I'd round some nuts off with this, but um, since then I learned how to take nuts and bolts apart. Yeah, without damaging them, so we're good to go on that. Okay, just let her soak for a few minutes and some uh, knock her loose. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> I'm telling you. Works every time. So I'll just stick a brass punch through here, <clears throat> put a pivot point, and then just gently prime out. You know, I could have foregone all of this. So a lot of the kids that don't work on carbureted stuff, I'm going to give you a little tip here. I'm sure you're all aware that if you put a sticker on the back of your car, like a performance sticker, um, it, it really helps your horsepower. There we go. For your old carbureted cars, it's a little different. We didn't put stickers on the back to make them go faster or make them work better. What we used was chrome valve covers. So I could have foregone this entire carburetor rebuild if I had just put a set of chrome valve covers on it. She'd have been fine. Okay, that's a 3 8 more than likely, so let me grab my 10 millimeter. Don't judge me. Uh, there we go, it worked. <laughs> Thank God. You know you do it too. Everything on this carburetor has a coat of varnish on it. Like, it was well protected. Wow. 
Those guys were nasty, completely clogged, covered in everything imaginable. And I want you to see down in there, look, okay, how hard that is. I can't scratch it. I can't even get to the metal. Well, I got fresh, clean media in the vapor honing cabinet, and guys, unless you know that you can get all the crud out of your carburetor, I would highly suggest you do not do this. Um, it would be bad for you. <laughs> You're going to suck this stuff into your engine. But I'm not worried about it. Ah, vapor honing's awesome. Turn the windshield wiper off real quick. Oh yeah, nice. We got a new carburetor. That, my friends, is one nice looking carbonator. Beautiful. Now I know what a lot of you guys are thinking, right? That this is not standard operating procedure for rebuilding a carburetor. And I would say you're right, but you're right for one reason only. Because nobody has a vapor honing cabinet. 
If you did, you would be doing this with all of your aluminum parts. Now we do have some channels and valleys and little little places for uh, the media to get stuck, but the media, by the time it hits this, it's destroyed. Um, and it's it's uh, like half a grain of sand, but it's actually a real light uh, silica. So it's so light that it doesn't even damage the surface. It really just cleans it. And when I say clean, you think you've ever seen a carburetor that clean that's getting rebuilt? No, it's because it's vapor honed. It's a really, really good way to clean aluminum. We're going to flip it over and show you the gasket material. So all this gasket material is still stuck on there, and it did not beat the gasket material up. It doesn't really damage the parts. You're still going to have to come in and clean up every single hole. You're still going to have to go in and clean the goop out. Like, that is a lot of goop in that hole. There's a lot of goop inside this hole. So none of the sand even made it through there. Look at all that crud that's on the tip of that. You probably can't see it. But anyway, uh, here's an example. Down at the very bottom of this, where those two jets went, I can just pull out like globs of goop. If you want to learn more about vapor honing, uh, over on Instagram, Vapor Hone Technologies, they're a company that actually builds honing cabinets and they show all this kind of stuff. If you guys don't have the money to buy a vapor honing cabinet, but you do have the skills to build your own, I made a video on how I built mine. It's fantastic. I'll put a link in the description and you guys can go check it out. It'll also be a card at the end of this video that you can click on. It'll take you directly over there. So that's the stuff that's coming out of the jets right there. And there's no grittiness to it. It's just down in this hole. You can see I slopped some around. Really, really nasty stuff. Gross. But you remember the inside of that bowl, how dirty it was? Look how clean it is now. Every nook and cranny inside this carburetor is just absolutely spotless, man. Fantastic. So if you want all your aluminum components to look like this, build yourself a vapor honing cabinet. I think I had a couple of hundred bucks in my build, and um, it is fantastic. Beautiful carburetor on a really dirty engine. Let's see it show fire. Yeah, try it. All right, yeah, she likes a little fuel in there. Pump her again. Give her a shot. All right, go. Let her run. Let her run. <laughs> hey, okay. Just start it and then let it run. Important if you loosen your fuel pump, you tighten it back up. <laughs> <laughs>